Today I'm filming in my bathroom because I'm trying to figure out what kind of secret magic in here makes my selfies look airbrushed. That aside, today I'm going to be talking about placing tab out orders, or more specifically tab out group orders. I personally organized five group orders with tab out, so hopefully I should have all the details figured out by now. So I thought I would just make a video about how to make a tab out group order and kind of what to expect from making a tab out group order. One thing you should keep in mind when organizing a tab out group order is it's actually a ton of work. You should expect to spend at least a few hours actually answering people's questions and compiling the order. That might sound like an exaggeration, but it's really not. Every time I start over and do another one, I always forget how much work it is, and I'm like, why am I doing this? So appreciate people who organize group orders, and be careful if you're going to do it. Make sure that you actually have the patience for this. So, when organizing a shopping service, you might already realize this, but you do have to pay for shipping twice. First, you pay for the domestic shipping from the seller to the service, and then you pay for the sh international shipping from the service to you. And if you're placing a group order and not everyone lives near you, they're going to have to pay for shipping three times. So keep that in mind and make sure to make that extremely clear to everyone who's in your group order, because if you don't say it multiple times, somebody's going to be shocked when you ask about the second shipping. On a side note, EMS shipping costs, and most shopping services will recommend EMS, are based on volumetric weight, which is an imaginary value based on the volume of the package and having nothing to do with the weight of the package. So the shopping service will say your package is such and so kilograms or whatever, they're actually talking about this value, and if you see it on the package, they're not lying. This is what they're charging them by. And the reason you should keep this in mind is, like I said, it's based on the volume, not based on the weight, and that might have an impact on your cost estimation. And also, when you think about that, when you get a bunch of smaller items in a package with bigger items, the smaller items might not cost anything extra to ship like literal zero, because they can actually fit in between or into the larger items. For example, if you're buying some purses, they might shove accessories in the purses because that costs you less money in the end. So when you're unpackaging it, you might be surprised by that. And also, like I said, it might help with your estimations to know that. So keep that in mind. So the first thing you need to decide when you're placing your group order is something a lot of people might not think about, but it is whether or not you're going to allow reserve and custom items in your order. Now that might not seem like the first most important thing, but it is. If you allow reserve and custom items in your order, people can get a greater variety of stuff. It might lead to a bigger order which has better savings on shipping. People can get custom stuff which might be really great for them if they're really tall or big. That might be really nice for them. But the downside is your order could take three, four, five months to get to you. And I'm not exaggerating. It could take a long, long, long time to get to you because some of these items take months to make. And then they have to go to the, the shopping service and then they have to come to you. and then da, da, da. So it takes forever. So that is really the first thing you need to decide. The second thing you need to decide is what shopping service are you going to use? Unless you have a friend in China, and that's really great. Um, but when you're trying to pick a shopping service, you'll actually want to know whether you're going to be including reserve and custom items or not, probably. Um, if I'm including reserve and custom items or anything at all complicated, I go to Tab Out Spray because I've had good um, experiences with them in the past. Um, a lot of my friends recommend Yoi Buy for that kind of thing, and I'm going to try them in the future. Um, if you just want something really fast, not complicated, super simple, go to China by Agency because they are super fast. It's just a very simple form. You don't have to download files and fill out Excel documents. It's a really easy shopping cart system on China by Agency, but they will not accept reserve or custom items. They will lie to you and say they're sold out. And if you say, no, I understand that it's a reserve item. I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to pay the extra. I know. They'll be like, it's sold out and then you can go to another shopping service and buy it so you know the line so do not go to them for reserve or custom items just go to them if you want something super fast super easy another place to go to if you want something super fast super easy if they have it on their website is um 
my Alita dress. I've had a really good experience with them, so I do really recommend them if you just want to very simply, very quickly order something. They're really good for that. After you've gotten those details straight, um, you're going to go public with your plans, and when you do go public with your plans, you want to set some very strict deadlines. Set a very strict deadline for people to submit their items by, and then submit a very strict deadline for people to pay the initial payment by two or three days later. Um, when you set that deadline, do stick to that deadline. If somebody comes in a day or two late, don't just add them into the order, because if they're coming in after your deadline, they're going to come in after your deadline when you need payment and that is no good for you, no good for the other people in your order because it holds your whole order up. So don't deal with people who don't pay attention to your deadlines. That's a, that's a bad idea, that's an accident waiting to happen. You might want to set up your deadline a few weeks away so that people have time to save up money and more people might get on the order. Or you might not want to do that because things can sell out. So that's kind of up to you, your decision. But those are two things to think about with that. Now when you're placing a group order, make sure that you're going to be able to submit the payment promptly, submit the order list promptly, answer any questions that the shopping service sends you, and answer any questions that other people in the order ask you very promptly. If you're going to make people wait a long time, you probably really shouldn't um, be planning um, a group order because people will get really frustrated about that. It's better just to order for yourself and not place group orders if you're going to make people wait a long time. When all of the items have arrived to the seller, you need to divide shipping costs. And for some people, this is where it can get really complicated. And if you've got people who have never ordered from Tabao before, you might have issues with people accusing you of being unfair or saying you're getting ripped off on the shipping. But yeah, so this, this does get a little complicated trying to figure out how you're going to divide the international shipping costs. The domestic shipping is easy depending on where you order from because you can see which person's items cost what. But when you come to the international shipping, it's just kind of all lumped together. And some people will just divide it evenly between the different people in the order, but I don't really like that or think that's, that, that's fair. So what I like to do personally is I come up with a little point system and I come up with a point for each item and then I add them all together and then I divide the total shipping costs by using these numbers. So what I do is I will say a pair of socks or anything smaller than that is like a one, a skirt could be like a two, a dress could be like a three, and a pair of shoes could be like a four, and a parasol or like a pair of boots or platform shoes could be a five. So I make up everybody's points and then I use the percentages to determine the cost for everyone. That might sound a little complicated to some people who aren't so good at math, so you might want to get help if you're not very good at math on deciding what's fair, but just the main thing is just to make sure you're being very fair to everyone in the order when you try to decide, divide the international shipping costs. If you're waiting on shipping costs and one person hasn't paid yet and you're just waiting on one last person and you have the money to be able to pay for them, this is completely up to you, but if you trust that person, you can go ahead and cover them, but keep it a secret. If you keep it a secret, they're going to try and pay you back as soon as they can, thinking that the whole order is held up and waiting on you. But you can go ahead and place the order and get everything moving, but not let them know that you covered them. I think that's the best course of action in that situation if you want to go ahead and hurry the order up. If you have a delinquent buyer at this point, it just kind of sucks and it's something you have to be prepared for and deal with. Um, if you get to this point where all of the items have arrived at the shopping service and you're ready to pay for the international shipping and they want to try to back out then, there's really nothing you can do. You can't ask the shopping service to return their items and refund you the money. Um, the only thing you can do is really accept the items and do what you want with them. You can keep them, give them to a friend, sell them. Uh, depending on the situation, you should not feel obligated to refund the buyer's original payment even if you do sell them because they really put you in a tight spot and you had to spend your money to ship those items you didn't even order to yourself. So you really don't owe them anything if they do that to you. They're the ones who are being mean. So don't feel bad. Don't let anyone let you feel bad and just do what you got to do to make the order work out for everyone and not delinquent buyers. Making the order work out for everyone means making it work out for you too. 
Now, when all the items arrive to your house, you can open them up and look at them all before anybody else comes. That's kind of the perk of being the person who organizes the order. You don't have to feel bad about opening it before everyone else if you want to. And there's actually a perk to this. If some of the people can't come and get their items soon, you want to open it up and check their items for them and make sure everything's okay. Because if anything's wrong, very noticeably wrong, you want to be able to alert the shopping service sooner rather than later. Because if they can do anything about it, they're not going to want to if you wait a week or two after receiving it. That's all for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Bye-bye! Check out my other tab out orders. I'll go ahead and put the link right there.